Hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at Homelinks 210, Identifying Triangles. If you take a look at the, uh, the grid right here, you'll notice that we have six geometric shapes. Hey, they're all triangles. I'm done. Right? No. There are many different kinds of triangles, just like there are many different kinds of cookies. There's chocolate chip, oatmeal raisin, snickerdoodle, frosted sugar cookies, lemon cookies, uh, thin mints. Oh, I could go on. So a cookie is not just a cookie, okay? A triangle is not just a triangle. So the instructions say write the letter or letters, and that's an important point right there, that match each statement. So this is kind of like a riddle or a series of riddles where you have to look at these six pictures and ask yourself, does that triangle match this descriptor, okay? Scientists use this all the time for when they classify animals. So when they look at a new species, they use the descriptors of is it uh, warm-blooded or cold-blooded? Does it have an exoskeleton? Does it have gills? Does it breathe air? Is it covered in feathers? Things like that to determine if an animal is a bird, a fish, a mammal, an insect, or what have you. So let's uh, classify some triangles. You see it says identify, but really we're classifying. Number one asks, does it have perpendicular line segments? Okay, so first it would be useful to know what a perpendicular line segment is. Well, perpendicular means that they are intersecting and they make a 90 degree angle. So if you look right here, there is a 90 degree angle on triangles C and D because we have that telltale little box in the corner that tells us it's a right angle, which also means it is a right triangle, which also means it has perpendicular line segments. So on that line, I would write the letters C and D. And we'll separate them with a comma. Okay. Number two asks, does it have an obtuse angle? Well, uh, we can eliminate choices C and D because uh, a triangle has a total measure of degrees of 180 degrees within the three angles that make up the triangle. So if we've hit 90 degrees, uh, we don't have enough uh, degrees to uh, spread around to make an obtuse angle as well. So the only ones we can find that have an obtuse angle have to have two other acute angles to go along with it. And if you look at E and F, E and F, you'll see that these angles here are more than 90 degrees because if I go, let's zoom in really extremely, and if I try to create uh, a square, again, I'm drawing freehand, like so. If I try to create a square angle here, you'll notice that my square little box has a little gap inch right there. So it's more than 90 degrees. So unlike uh, C and D, um, E and F are what we call obtuse triangles, or they have obtuse angles. So we'll just put those letters there, E and F. So that's how we go about doing it. So we have to look at each descriptor, and then we have to think about, well, which of these triangles match, okay? So some of the clues or uh, riddles help us solve the other ones. For example, if I look at number one that has perpendicular line segments, okay? If I look at the question number seven, does not have any right angles. Well, the definition of a perpendicular line segment is uh, an intersection that makes a right angle. So any triangle that has perpendicular line segments, uh, the others would not. So I could use the fact that I've eliminated C and D as having right angles to help me solve for number seven. So A, B, E, and F. Okay, so take a look at these triangles. Try to uh, sort them into categories to classify them as you would. Um, and uh, try to figure out what makes each of these triangles unique. 
Now down here at the bottom, let's look at these uh, practice problems. These are uh, practice skills from earlier in this unit. Uh, sometimes the practice problems uh, will remind you of things we learned in a previous unit, but now that we're already on 2.10 in our home links, uh, we're now having to be reminiscent uh, about lessons we learned earlier in this unit. List all the factors of 12. Well, factors of 12 are all the numbers I can multiply together to uh, get a product of 12. So for example, I know that 1 times 12 will give me 12. 12 is also an even number, so I know 2 is involved. 2 times 6. And then uh, 3 times 4 is also a factor pair because 3 times 4 is also 12. So what are the factors of 12? Well, simply put, it would be 1, 12, 2, 6, and 3 and 4. And I could list those out in numeric order like so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Those six numbers are the six factors of 12. And then lastly, it says, name the next four multiples of 7. Now I say that uh, because what do you see here? 35, what's going to be the temptation? Uh, you want to skip count by 5s, because skip counting by 5s is super easy. But they don't want you to skip count by 5s. They want you to skip count or name the multiples of 7. So what is 35 plus 7 going to give you? Well, 5 plus 7 is 12. So my next number must be 42. And then I would add 7 to 42 to get my next multiple, which I'll let you do the, uh, the arithmetic for that. So skip counting by 7s, not by 5. Okay. If you have questions about skip counting, multiples, factors, multiplication, triangles, or just life in general, hey, reach out to your math teacher. They would be happy to answer uh, your questions. Uh, if not, friends, we will talk again soon. Thanks.